welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the longer 3D slicer. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you're starting out with 3D printing, you may know by now that beside your 3D modeling software, which is the one you use to generate your models, you will need another piece of software specific for 3D printing, which is called a slicer. Now the scope of the slicer is, as the name implies, to slice your model into multiple individual layers and then to generate the tool path or the printing path that your 3D printer can read and execute. Now there are many slicing softwares out there and some of the most common ones are the Cura Slicer, which you can see over here, and the Prusa Slicer. Now, these are two great slicer. Um, Prusa Slicer is in particular uh, the one that I use uh, the most, and they have tons of functionality. However, all of the functionalities available in this slicer might be a little bit overwhelming, and it's not something that you need if you are starting out. So, in my opinion, uh, simple slicers like the longer uh, 3D slicer will be a great point to start. Now the cool thing about any slicer is that they are mostly sharing a similar type of interface and all of the slicing parameters, the name of the slicing parameters are pretty much all the same. So uh, once you start with a slicer passing into another slicer is not going to be that hard. So in my opinion, if you are buying a, a longer 3D printer, um, the proprietary slicer is going to be um, a good point to start. The other cool thing when you uh, use a proprietary piece of software is that most likely you will find the configuration for your specific machine ready into the software and so it is going to be a plug and play uh, type of software. Now, unfortunately, um, the software hasn't been updated and uh, I couldn't find the configuration uh, files or settings uh, about the longer uh, LK4X, which I reviewed uh, recently. However, uh, there was the longer LK4 available and after uh, tuning a couple of things, I was basically able to use it. Now, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, instruct you on where to hunt for the parameters. I'll rather go and paste the parameters in the video description or to simply uh, put a link where you can download the parameters so you don't need to chase them. But uh, very quickly, what you need is under machine, after you, of course, install the slicer, uh, after machine, uh, you can see over here, I have the LK4X, which is what I created. You will see under machine settings, um, you will basically need to uh, input these parameters here, uh, which are related to the dimension uh, of the machine, as you can see over here, the dimension, the type of machine and the firmware. Um, so you could actually copy it from here already. And then the other thing you will need is the start and then G code. Now, every machine needs a little bit of tuning to work properly and to give you uh, good results from the first start. And so obviously the brand has already done the job for us. And so they will normally put uh, some processes that has to be executed by the machine uh, as a uh, setup at the beginning and at the end of the project. And so that's exactly where the start G code and the hand G code uh, come into play. Now, again, I'm going to paste this in the video description or I'll put the link to my website where you can just copy and paste them as well. So you don't have to uh, be bothered about that. Now, with this out of the way, the first time you open the software, you are welcomed with this uh, 3D printable model of a whistle. 
I'm going to just give you a quick breakdown of the interface. Here we have the, at the center the model or the slicing view over here. Uh, and then over to the side, we will have uh, the slicing uh, uh, panel or the place where you can set uh, your slicing parameters. And as you can see, this is common with other software. You will see in Cura over here, I have the parameters in the center, I have the model. Uh, and on Prusa, uh, the Prusa slicer is exactly the same thing. So uh, as you can see, uh, the interface is also pretty similar. Now, in the model view over here, I would suggest you to be in this view mode. Okay, as you can see, uh, this will uh, allow you to basically arrange and position your models into the uh, build plate which is over here this is the build plate of your machine okay and actually that there is also the height so that's the actual volume uh, by the way to zoom in and out you will use the scroll wheel and to rotate uh, you will use the right click right mouse over here to do that okay so now when you click it you see you have some contextual option coming up for example you can do uh, rotation so over here you can see I'm going to rotate it you can do pre pretty much what you want you can lay it flat this will basically recognize a flat area uh, you can even uh, scale it and you can do a bunch of manipulations there plus obviously you can move it so let me reset everything okay then the place where I highly recommend you to be for most of the time while you are actually configuring your uh, slicing parameters is into the layers. Now you can have a look to all of this. I don't see them useful beside the overhang, which is going to show you uh, which part of your, which feature of your model are basically unsupported and overhanging. And so you can see here the inside, the bottom one, it's not overhanging but it's actually on the build plate okay so let's go now into the layers mode now this is in my opinion the best uh, part of the slicing software and that is so you can see layer by layer the toolpath the printing path okay now you do not need to check every single layer but this will allow you to actually check particular layers where you have some geometry changes or some particular details or some critical um, overhangs or curves or anything that of course you will understand as you progress uh, with 3d printing and so this will allow you to basically see if everything prints as it's supposed to be okay then when you come closer let me go to a layer here when you come closer you can see you have a color coded path here can see in red is the external perimeter uh, in uh, green is the uh, internal shell internal part of the perimeter and in yellow over here we can see the infill and then in blue this tiny line there are free movements so there is no printing going on here it's just the nozzle moving from one point to another before uh, restart printing okay so now there are a few things that you need to uh, make sure before you start and then all of the parameters can actually be left in default. They will work just fine. Now the first thing will be the nozzle diameter, okay, or the nozzle size. Now 0.4 millimeter is standard with most machines out there when you buy them. Uh, now this is a very important parameter because all the calculations of the slicing software will be based on this parameter, okay. Um, so, if you found the configuration, uh, the configuration file on the slicing, uh, on the slicer, uh, you will basically have this already corrected. Uh, but it is something worth to double check. Okay, it's very important. Uh, then, under the basics, you will need to import. You will need to input actually the parameters for your material. Uh, now, most filaments are 1.75 millimeters in diameter, as you can see over here. However, if you happen to buy a filament which is uh, of different diameter, you will need to input that there. This is also important for the calculation. 
And then the temperature, both printing temperature, that's the temperature of your extruder, and then the bed temperature, the temperature of your build plate. Uh, now these parameters, uh, so the diameter and the temperatures, will be on the spool of material that you buy. 260, it's okay as a default, okay? Then the most important parameter uh, that you might want to uh, tweak is the layer height. Now, right now I'm printing at 0.2 millimeters layer height, which is a uh, pretty good layer height. However, if you're printing something larger, you could also crank up the number to 0.3. And that, of course, is going to take less time to execute. Now, uh, the layer height will basically change the quality. The reason is that the lower is the, uh, the thickness of the layer, the higher amount of details are going to come out, okay? Also, the lower is the layer height, uh, the greater overhang or slops that you are going to be able to work out in your model, okay? But of course, that is going to add up to the printing time, for example, you can see over here, I have an approximated execution time of 28 minutes, and then you have the length and the mass of your material, okay? These are good estimate. Now, let me switch back into 0.2 millimeters that will regenerate. And as you can see from 28, we went to 41 uh, minutes of execution time, and pretty much more or less is the same quantity of material. So, depending on the amount of details that you have on your model and that you want to show. Also, depending on whether or not the part is uh, part of an assembly or anyway it needs to mate with some other components, uh, by printing a higher quality uh, will make the overall dimensions and thicknesses of your um, 3D print preciser, okay? Uh, so that is something that you will obviously learn as you uh, progress into the 3D printing. Um, another important parameter here, which we don't need in this model, but uh, you might need in other model, is the support. Now, right now, as we saw into the overhang, we have this overhanging part. So these are basically going to be printed at mid-air. Well, in reality, it's not going exactly at mid-air, but uh, they will be basically bridging in between the, uh, the perimeters here. Uh, now, bear in mind that the, you can bridge up to a reasonable uh, distance, even up to 50 millimeters without any noticeable uh, defect or problem. However, when you're going to print something that has large bridges, so the overhang will be more than 50 millimeters in length, or when you have some details that are basically at mid-air, unsupported from no any other uh, sides, that means coming from up, for example, then you will need the uh, supports. Now, in this case, the supports are not being generated because we are uh, asking to generate support only touching the build plate. Uh, so in this case, you should go for everywhere, okay? And as you can see, these have generated um, supports for us. So if, as you can see, this uh, cyan, lay, cyan uh, color here, it's actually our support material. Now, uh, for this small object, you do not need to support the small, uh, the small bridge inside. Um, however, if it was larger, you had to come up with some kind of support but bear in mind that when the support is inside, it will be very, very difficult to remove it. So you will need to uh, work it out in a way that um, it's going to be easy also to remove. Uh, and here you have some additional, um, ad more advanced things like the type of structure. Over here you can see, I'm going to change into a grid. So that will generate now, and that's, as you can see now, is a grid. Also the overhanging angle for the support, the fill amount, you can see I can change it to 5%, for example, and that is going to be, uh, to be using less material, okay? So that is something good to have in mind. You can also disable them all together.
okay? So in this case, we don't need any support. Uh, and once you are happy with uh, the way things are looking and with the details, unfortunately, this software doesn't do a very good job at rendering the uh, slicing like some other software would do. You can see over here, this is working a little bit better. Okay, and also on the Prusa slicer here, you can see that this is working a very highly detailed uh, slicing layer. Okay, but I think it's good enough to get started, as I said. All right, so once you're ready, uh, you can insert your SD card and you can see this will recognize that there is an SD card inserted and will prompt you to save directly to SD card. This will automatically name and save it there and then it, you can basically eject the SD card. Now uh, you can jump on your 3D printer and to launch the 3D printing prompt. pretty much all. Now, if you are already into 3D printing and you're working with some other slicer, you might notice that the slicer is a little bit uh, limited in what it can do. However, to start, it is perfectly fine. You get all of the uh, slicing parameters that you might need to tackle most of your projects. Now, I hope you found my video helpful, informative. If you liked it, click the thumb button below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!